We have seen a lot of drama about JKBMS. Or even worse, catching fire because they are heavily overcharged. JKBMSs are bad and I no longer recommend them. I made a quite popular video about this topic and I received several questions. It all came down to this. Is JK still on top of the game? This is Frankie for EasyPowerWall.com. Let's find out. Before we start the Q&A session, this video is a follow-up video of a previous video where I described all the features and where I go over all the parameters of this BMS. So if you're interested in that video, there's also a link in the video below. In the Q&A session, I will go over a few questions that were very obvious for me, but not uh, for everyone who is following me here on the channel. If you have more questions in the, in the future, don't hesitate to contact me. You can uh, ask your question under the video and I also have a Facebook page, Easy Powerwall, where you can ask a, a quick question. Let's start with some history to understand how they got to version 3 and not version 2 as mentioned in most videos. Gcon or JK is making battery management systems and balancers since many years. Five years ago I started using one of their products, a balancer. Use it for a couple of years and it never failed. In the early days, their first BMS needed activation with a plus 5 volt battery. Not that user friendly, but the company invested time and money to work on customer satisfaction. When I started building the 60 kWh battery, they launched version 2. The version with the start button. A small button for men, but a huge step forward. No changes were reported about functionality. And now there's version 3. It has a new size factor and it comes with a breakout board for easy integration with inverters. The new design is much better for cooling, but mounting the BMS is quite a challenge. I think the only solution is to put it down on a shelf or design a mounting system for your battery box. The new V3 has a few new settings and options, like programmable relay, charge and discharge current limit, all things my Victron has under the hood. So what was all the drama about? Well, some early adopters found an issue with the firmware. When you remove the BMS, the settings were reset to default values. In the meantime, this issue is solved with a new firmware update. But let me tell you something very important. Never and never ever remove the battery management system from your battery. Not even when you go away for two months. The BMS is your guardian angel. It should be connected all the time. I suppose you don't remove the batteries from your fire alarm before you leave on holiday. There is a red light into the start button. Someone asked me the question, what am I doing wrong? Whatever I do with the configuration, it remains red. He thought that if the configuration was done well, okay, it should be green. So, but the red light is just in LED. It's not indication of good, wrong, full or low. It's just a red light. Another question I often get is how have I done the top balancing? Because this was never in a movie. Well, I have never done a top balancing. Twice a year I charge the batteries full and of course intermediate when it's summer the batteries get full and balancing is kicking in. But I do it and I've done it recently uh, just before spring and also in the late autumn I do a full charge, let the BMS do its work and make sure all cells are balanced. So for me it doesn't make any sense uh, why should I push the batteries very hard to 3.65 volts. They don't like it too much so I keep my voltage below uh, that voltage and I charge to 3.45 and when I go into a balance phase I increase to 3.48 but I never go above this voltage. This morning I noticed the battery is full it's at 55 volts you see the charging is limited to only 6 watts, the standby current of the inverter. Let's check the BMSs. 
as you can see see protection cell over voltage i think i slightly increase it for the balancing to 3.48 but you see the cell voltage difference is only 0 0.03 so it's well within spec of the of the battery bank let's see the others the same here for this bank 0 0.02 volt difference so very pleased with the performance you see the balance current of one amp doing its job to uh, flatten the curve but of course i will never charge above 3.45 so all uh, cells will remain in balance same for this one 0 0 1 very very well balanced cells and battery packs i'm very pleased with the performance after one year of usage you see the remain battery is at 100 percent i think i saw here on this pack it was 99 so i don't know how it's triggering the um the battery state of charge i think this is a advantage with the version 3 that you can specify a certain voltage and when it trips that voltage or when it exceeds this voltage then it will set the battery to 100 percent but you see on the top one year 15 days and six hours in use uh, always been connected to the battery bank and performing perfectly fine the percentage of capacity left behind between 3.45 and 3.65 is only one or maybe two percent so don't push your batteries too hard it's go for a longevity instead of that one or two percent uh, capacity gain that you can have with the higher voltage so i prefer to protect my batteries at a lower voltage than pushing them to the limit yes it will work also for lithium ion you just choose in the menu between LIFEPO, Lithium Ion and LTO. If you go for Lithium Ion, of course you go for Lithium Ion and then you probably go for a 14S instead of the 16S I use here. As a bonus, I will add the settings for Lithium Ion as well. So the download will be available in the description of the video. Uh, can you install the software from BMS, which is available in uh, Android Play and also in, in Apple uh, software? Uh, can you install it on a car droid or any other uh, droid device? Well, I checked this and yes, you can. You can install the APK file on other droid devices. Maybe it's not so easy to find. So also this uh, file will be available uh, below the video. You just have to copy the APK file to your uh, new device, run it, and you can install and use the application from there. When you have a close eye on the BMS, you can see the BMS leads, have the wires from the, the push button and the two temperature sensors. I have no communication between the BMS and the system and the, the, the servo. That's a, a personal choice. I don't want to make the system too complicated. I have the shunt that's taking care of the state of charge and the communication between the system and the inverters and the servo. And that's my main indicator for the state of charge. So the BMS has to do one thing. It has to control the battery. All the other information, it's too cluttered, it's too much information. It has to take care of the batteries and that's it. I often compare it with the oil lamp in your car. For me the oil lamp has to go on when there is no oil, but I'm not interested in the temperature of the oil or, or how many liter oil is in the engine. It just has to do, just take care of the business. And if something is wrong, one cell is down, too high, too low, it has to shut off. But if you want to do, if you want to install a communication, it is possible. It has been done. There are many uh, uh, 
uh, YouTube movies uh, available, so check out. Uh, Andy made a great movie about that too. But it just adds a lot of complexity, a lot of wires, and I just wanted to avoid that. Which model to choose? There are ranges with balancing power between 0.6 amp and 2 amp. I choose for the 1 amp version. I would have preferred the 2 amp, but it was a bit too pricey and if it's over 150 uh, euro in Europe, you have to pay import tax. The 1 amp was just below 150 euro and much cheaper to buy and import into Europe. But if there is no import for you, go for the 2 amp, otherwise the 1 amp will do fine. The system now is running 1 amp, it hardly has to balance. I just did a, a top balance or a balance again, it charged to 3.48 and it only started to balance uh, at 3.46 uh, and I generally never go above this voltage, so um, the 1 amp version will do fine. Of course, if you build a very large system with one BMS, here I have four banks with four separate BMSs, but if you use only one BMS, then it's maybe better to go for the two amp version. Someone with a V2 version asked me if it's needed to upgrade to a V3. Well, I don't think so. I have the V2 and I will stick with the V2. It's proven technology, well engineered, it's bulletproof, it works very fine, so the V2 is uh, perfectly fine if, it's, uh, if it fits your bill. There are some um, interesting features, but most of them are uh, also into the Victron system. One item that's uh, interesting is the, the setting for the state of charge, you can say from this voltage when the BMS or one cell hits this voltage, the trigger to set the state of charge to 100% is better managed with the V3. This uh, V2 has sometimes some issues with uh, the state of charge uh, setting, but I mentioned this before, state of charge is completely managed by the Victron system, in my case with the Victron shunt. This device allows you to see the status of the battery, it means you don't have to log in with the app. It looks very nice, the only disadvantage is it uses the same port as the switch. So I had to replace the switch off, switch on button of the BMS. I will normally never switch it off, but you can see uh, the current, the inverter is switched off, it's overcasted, I had, don't have too much power. You see the battery status is only 10%. But it looks nice and if you don't tend to switch on, switch off the, the BMS, then it might be useful for you. While editing this YouTube clip, I found this on the internet. Apparently you can activate and deactivate the BMS uh, with the button on the side of the LCD. Press 2 seconds to activate the BMS, press 5 seconds to deactivate the BMS. So all in all it's a neat and useful solution. What do you think? We came to the end of this uh, video. I can confirm that Andy is still playing and fooling around with this JK BMSs. I mentioned this before, there's no real competition JK BMS is still on top of the game. I want to say that I did pay the BMSs for myself. I didn't get any support from a G Kong uh, factory. See you soon for another episode. This was Frankie for EasyPowerWall.com.